This is Evangelist Henry Walker. Welcome to the podcast. I want to start a new message today talking about how there's an excellent possibility of the rapture happening during this Passover season, which is Sunday the 21st of April to Wednesday the 30th of April, and to show different signs in the word of this possibility happening. Nobody knows when he's coming back just the Father, but we can know the season. This season is a very, very important season. But let's go to Father in prayer first. Father, I thank you for another opportunity to minister to your people, Father. I ask you to use me just the way you want, Father. Let me say only what you want me to say, nothing more and nothing less. Help people, Father, to open up their spirits and receive the word, but not only receive the word, but study the word for themselves. And Father, we give you all the praise and the honor, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Yeshua, by the blood of Yeshua. So again, I want to talk about, there's an excellent possibility of the rapture happening during the Passover season, which is again a Sunday, April 21st, to Wednesday, April 30th, Nisan 14 to Nisan 22, and I want to show you from the Word, signs that seem to indicate that this could happen during that time. There's so many people that are probably saying, look, the eclipse happened on April 8th, and nothing seems to be happening since. Well, in Genesis chapter 7, verse 4, you don't have to turn to it. When Noah and his family were in the ark, it rained seven days later. It didn't rain right away. And people have to be very, very careful, because I, I already heard that Iran wants to attack Israel, and there's people in authority are saying that there's an imminent terrorist attack in the United States because of the open borders. How many terrorists could be entering through the open borders? So things are happening, but remember, it's seven days after Noah and his family got into the ark that it started to rain. And so that eighth day, it started off like an ordinary day, but there was nothing ordinary about it. So I want to mention that, but also... Before I get into the main message, the Father is speaking to my heart that there's such an attack on women in general in this time right now. And in the month of March, we just had Purim talking about Esther, how Esther came to the front. Mordecai, her uncle, backed her up, and she came to the front and interceded for her people and was instrumental in saving her people from being destroyed. Again, there's such an attack on women as people had meetings in Washington defining a woman. It's just ridiculous. There's attacks in New York City where women are just being punched in the face. I was watching a video of this lady in Israel talking about Yeshua to the Jewish people, and this rabbi came and punched her in the face. So it's important that women rise up to where the Father wants them to be. I have a message on my website at henrywalker.org, a written message, Women Be Loose, the role of women in ministry. There's women out there who the Father's calling to come to the front. And then the Father wants people like Mordecai to be strong. And it's an attack on men to emasculate men. And so you can see how the enemy's moving and trying to move on young people to try to take their given identity that the Father gave them away. Husbands and families need to gather the family together and pray, read the Word together. This is very important. If you can turn with me to the book of Matthew... I want to talk about different signs in the Word that the rapture could happen during this Passover season. From April 21st on a Sunday, 6 p.m., to Wednesday, the 30th at 6 p.m., Book of Matthew. And also, as you're turning there, remember, if you enjoy these podcasts, tell other people about these podcasts. Share, subscribe, hit the like button, and also leave me a comment if you have any questions, any praise reports. I really would appreciate it. The book of Matthew, again, we're talking about signs that the rapture could be happening during the Passover season. Matthew 27, verse 52. This is when Yeshua, after he rose, in verse 52, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose, and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into 
Jerusalem and appeared unto many. So when he rose, many came out of the graves. And also remember in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, that the dead in Christ shall rise first. But who are these saints that arose? Go back to Matthew chapter 12. So when he arose, there was a rapture that came out of the graves. This was during the Passover season, Nisan 17, when Yeshua rose from the dead. Who were these bodies that came out of the grave? Matthew chapter 12. In verse 41, The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And behold, the greater than Jonah is here. I believe that these bodies, these people that came out of their graves and went into Jerusalem, they repented. They were from Nineveh and went into Jerusalem, rising up in judgment against those who had not repented when Yeshua walked among them. That's a, a beautiful example of the possibility of the rapture happening during the Passover season. Because remember, on Nisan 17, which is April 24th, that's when Yeshua rose. Nisan 17, at 3 p.m. A matter of fact, you can look it up yourself. In 31 AD, there was a blood moon. That's the day that Yeshua gave up his life for us. April 25th, it was on a Wednesday. There's a blood moon. That blood signifying the blood that was shed for us. A blood moon. Again on 31 AD, April 25th. And if you add 2,000 years to 31 AD, you come up to 2031. It's 2,000 years from when Yeshua came to when he's coming back in the second coming. So you have 2031 and you subtract seven years of the Great Tribulation. You're in 2024, this year. When the rapture could happen right before the seven-year tribulation. That will complete the 6,000 years from creation to Yeshua's second coming at the end of the tribulation. And right after that is that 1,000-year period of time known as the millennium. And that will complete the 7,000 years. And actually in Daniel chapter 9, verse 26 and 27, you could write it down, it says the Messiah is going to be cut off in the middle of the week. Wednesday is the middle of the week. So he died on Wednesday, 3 p.m. And again, there was a blood moon on that day, April 25th on a Wednesday. And he rose on Saturday at 3 p.m. Then he come to the tomb until after the Sabbath, which is after 6 p.m. And when he came to the tomb, he had already rose. If you turn with me to John, John chapter 20. He had Passover and seven days on leavened bread. The first day on leavened bread was a, a convocation, like a Sabbath, that had to be in the temple, and the last day of unleavened bread that had to be in the temple. So a lot of people get confused because Yeshua was put into the tomb before the Sabbath, but it wasn't a weekly Sabbath, it was a, a high Sabbath. And I said John 20, but you just go back to 19, John 19, verse 31. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain on the tree on the Sabbath day, but that Sabbath was a high day. It wasn't a, a weekly Sabbath. It was a high day. We saw Pilate that the legs might be broken, that they might be taken away. So again, the word says he was crucified in the middle of the week on the ninth hour of the day, which is 3 p.m. Remember, the day runs from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. The night is from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. 12 hours in the day, 12 hours in the night. And Yeshua mentioned about the 12 hours of the day. But in chapter 20, in verse 1, the first day of the week come at Mary Magdalene early when it was still dark. In Genesis 1, remember, that day began at evening. Evening and morning were the first day. So the day begins at 6 p.m. So the first day of the week was Saturday at 6 p.m. Every Saturday at 6 p.m. And so when it was still dark, Mary came to the tomb sometime after 6 p.m. It was still dark the first day of the week. And he had already risen. You see, it's strange how People assigned the resurrection about a week ago, and we know he died on Passover. Passover was on April 21st. They had the resurrection before he actually died. It's just ridiculous that people can go to the calendar and say this is when he rose. When he rose on Nisan 17, you got to go to the Hebrew calendar and see when is Nisan 17. And I'm telling you, Nisan 17 starts on April 24th, a Wednesday at 6 p.m., and that day at 3 p.m. is when he rose. So be in his presence at that 3 p.m. and receive that same power to raise Yeshua from the dead in your life. Get this non-word-based tradition out of your life. So again, he died on Wednesday, April 25th, 
at 3 p.m. in 31 A.D. And if you turn with me to the book of Numbers, go to the left to the book of Numbers, Numbers chapter 33, right after Leviticus, before Deuteronomy. Uh, again, we're talking about Nisan 14 and Nisan 22. We're talking about the Feast of Passover. Then you have seven days of unleavened bread. Some people call Passover to the end of unleavened bread Passover. The whole eight days they call Passover. The original Passover in Exodus was on Nisan 14. So in Numbers chapter 33, verse 3, And they departed from Ramesses, Egypt, in the first month, on the 15th day of the first month. That was the first day of unleavened bread. They left Egypt. So they were freed on Nisan 15. There's so much that happened during that period of time. Nisan 14 to Nisan 22nd. On the morrow after the Passover, the children of Israel went out with a high hand in the sight of all the Egyptians. Remember, I talked on the last podcast that the rapture is not an escape. The rapture is the Father is bringing full restoration in our lives before the rapture. And we're more than conquerors because he's doing it. He wants us to leave in triumph with him, not as an escape. He wants to bring everything up to date. If you haven't listened to that message, it's very important. Full restoration before the rapture. For the Egyptians, in verse 4, buried all their firstborn, which the Father had smitten among them upon their pagan idols. It's also the Father executed judgments. So, in verse 5, And the children of Israel removed from Ramesses and pitched in Sukkot. That was the night of the 15th. And he parted from Sukkot and pitched in Etham, which is in the edge of the wilderness. That was the night of the 16th. And he came to Baal Zepon at the Red Sea. So the Red Sea opened up on Nisan 17. He wants to open up a new beginning for us, going with him in a rapture, in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. And not only that, the Passover is a wonderful season for the rapture to happen because people that are left will say, wow, he's our Passover lamb, we missed it. He gets all the praise and honor by having a rapture during the Passover season. It's all about him. He's a Passover lamb. But you see here, they left on a, the 15th, and he came to the Red Sea on Nisan 17th, and the Red Sea opened. And also Yeshua again rose on Nisan 17th. Some of the other things that happened on Nisan 17th, which we'll get into later, is that Haman was killed on Nisan 17th. Noah's Ark rested on Mount Ararat on Nisan 17th. And they were marching around Jericho around Nisan 17th, and Jericho came down on the last day of Leaven Bread, Nisan 22nd. And Things I mentioned on Nisan 17 and things I will mention, the odds of all those events happening on that day, Nisan 17, I researched it, is 783 quadrillion, 864 trillion, 876 billion, 960 million to one. The Father's talking on this podcast to be ready, to be watchful. The way to be ready is to surrender everything to the Father, say, Father, I surrender my whole life to you, come into my spirit, fill me with your spirit, mortify the deeds of my flesh, make me more and more like Jesus Yeshua, and bring the fruit of the spirit out of my life. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Galatians 5, verse 22, 23. That's how he gets us ready. You go into that set-apart process, every day he works on you, he works on us, Again, he gets us ready for the rapture. That's how you get ready, by turning it over to him. If you turn with me to the book of Exodus, chapter 12, just go to the left. Talk about when they came out of Egypt, the time period between Nisan 14 and Nisan 22nd, in Exodus chapter 12. In verse 39, this is the time of unleavened bread. Verse 40, Now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. And it came to pass at the end of the 430 years, even the selfsame day it came to pass, the selfsame day, that all the hosts of the Father went out from the land of Egypt. The same day, 430 years early, they went into captivity on the 15th of Nisan. 430 years later, they come out on Nisan 15. Boy, the Father's timing is impeccable. That's why it's so important to study his feast days. At henrywalker.org, I have messages on the feast days. But I also have two free books at the bottom of the written message page. One is called Noon, talks about the feast days, and certain hours in the day when the Father moves the most. And then 
The second book is, Is the Trinity Really a Mystery? Explaining the, the Trinity. Those books are both free at henrywalker.org at the bottom of the written message page. It's important to study the feast days, and there's so many written messages there on the feast days and other topics that are very important, showing you the truth from the word about, like, wine is a mocker, the truth about wine. Women be loose, I mentioned before, the truth about women in ministry, the truth about divorce and remarriage, from the word, not tradition, not people's opinion, but from the word. And you really have to make sure that anything that you have in your walk with the Father through Yeshua from Constantine, such as his holidays and other junk that he introduced and took away what the apostles taught and brought his own form of Christianity, anything you have from him, you just go back and research it. Get it out of your life because you don't want to be earthbound when the rapture happens. And especially my messages on drinking wine. There's about 400 messages there. You really will enjoy them. Every message is pray about it and trace it back to the Word. The scripture upon scripture in those messages. Line upon line. Precept upon precept. So the Father is not going to let you down. His timing is impeccable. He's going to free you up and he's going to free us all up to go into rapture. It's in his perfect time. But I believe this eclipse with the X across the United States is a sign of judgment. But the other side is the beginning of the year in Nissan 1. It's blessings for us, a new beginning for us. And that new beginning could translate into the rapture. I'm not saying it's going to happen during the Passover season, but it's an excellent possibility. And we will know the season. Let's go to the book of Esther. Again, we're talking about Nisan 14 to Nisan 22. Go, go to the book of Esther. Esther is right at the first, second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, before Job and Psalms and Proverbs. Book of Esther, chapter 3. Most of you know the story about Purim, Esther. Uh, Esther was in preparation to try out to be the queen. And Esther became the queen. King Azasuerus, he loved her. In chapter 3, Haman was an Agagite. In verse 1, and remember, Mordecai was from the tribe of Kish. Remember when Samuel wanted Saul, the father told Samuel to tell Saul to kill all of the Agagites, take nothing or nobody captives. But he didn't. He, he kept the king of, of the Agagites alive. So Saul was from the family of Kish. And here in chapter 3, verse 1, Haman is an Agagite. See, the father always gets his person. So here, somebody from the family of Kish is going to kill this Agagite, Haman. And Mordecai was so instrumental in having a Haman killed. Incredible. And so they wanted to kill all the Jews. First of all, Mordecai was not bowing down to Haman, the only person in the kingdom who was not bowing down to Haman. So he wanted to destroy all the Jews. In verse 7, in the first month, that is the month Nisan, in the twelfth year of King Azasuerus, they cast Pur, that is the lot, that's how Purim got its name, before Haman from day to day and from month to month, to the twelfth month, that is the month of Da. So they issued that decree. In verse 12, then were the king's scribes called on the thirteenth day of the first month, which is Nisan, and the name of King Azasuerus was it written and sealed with the king's ring. So he had gotten permission to kill all the Jews from King Azasuerus. And it's going to start on the twelfth of Da. But here you have Nisan 13 when it was signed. And now Mordecai is coming to Esther, who's, who's now the queen, and saying, this is the plan. Haman wants to kill all the Jews. In verse 13, chapter 4, Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou should escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if you hold your peace at this time, then it shall be enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place, because they are the father's people. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? The father wants to raise up women and men, strong men, to work with the women and get this job done in these last days. And Mordecai worked with Esther. Then Esther said in verse 16, Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Sushan, and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise, 
And so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. But if I perish, I perish. Look at the boldness that she had. I'm speaking to the women in these last days. Be bold. Stand against those attacks to, to pull down women. And you men, stand against those attacks to emasculate you. And stand strong and teach your children to stand strong against that. And if necessary, go into the public school systems to the board meetings and do it peacefully and complain about what they're teaching these kids. The weird, filthy things that they're putting in the schools with the books and the teachings. And fight against it. Be strong in the Father and in the power of his might. Then on the third day, Esther did go in before the king. And the king was so receptive of her. She went in unannounced, and somebody going in unannounced before the king could be killed unless he turned his golden scepter to her, which he did. He said, I'll give you half of the kingdom, Esther. What can I do for you? He said, well, I want a banquet tonight with me, you, and Haman. This was this Nisan 16. And at the end of that banquet, he said, what else can I do for you? Well, I want another banquet tomorrow on Nisan 17. She knew his anointing on Nisan 17 to destroy, to cut off who's coming against the Father. And she waited until the Nisan 17. She told King Azazurus what Haman had plotted. And, of course, Haman got hung on the gallows that he prepared for Mordecai on Nisan 17. So the people were set free, theoretically, on Nisan 17. Later on, uh, King Azazurus signed another decree that the Jews could defend themselves. <laughs> and so many that would come to destroy the Jews became Jews because of Mordecai. And they were allowed to defend themselves won such a great victory. And that's how Purim came about the celebration. The 14th and the 15th of Adar. So again, it's Nisan 17. People were free. The Jewish people were free. If you go back to the left, the Second Chronicles, a few books. Second Chronicles 29. Just go to the left, 2 Chronicles 29, before Ezra. 2 Chronicles 29, this is when Hezekiah wanted to clean the temple. 2 Chronicles 29, verse 15. And they gathered their brethren and sanctified themselves and came according to the commandments of the king by the words of the Father to cleanse the house of the Father. So many congregations need to be cleansed from this Constantine teaching. 1,700 years of tradition, that's not even in the Word. It's important for everybody who's involved in it to seek the Word. And don't let it hold you back in the rapture. In verse 17, 2 Chronicles 29, And it began on the first day of the first month, Nisan 1, to sanctify. And on the eighth day of the month they came to the porch of the Father, and so they sanctified the house of the Father in eight days. And in the sixteenth day of the first month they made an end. So by Nisan 17, the house was clean. As I mentioned, the Father can come back and take us in the rapture on Nisan 17. Let's go to the book of Acts chapter 12. Again, we're talking about the Passover season as an excellent time that the rapture could happen. Acts chapter 12. This, Peter was arrested and put in prison. Acts chapter 12, verse 1. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. The devil is only interested in certain people that are serving the Father, that are standing on his word. Not standing on Constantine's junk, but standing on the true word. In this ministry, we go back to what Yeshua taught the apostles, what the apostles taught others. Yeshua, he tells us what to glean from the Old Testament. Remember, Yeshua is a Jew, was a Jew, always will be a Jew. And Constantine and his crew did a great job of removing that from his form of Christianity. And most congregations are all caught up in it. But the choice is up to you. Remember, the road to heaven is straight and narrow, and few are found on it. The road to hell and destruction is wide, and many are found on it. In Acts chapter 12, in verse 2, remember, Herod was only interested in certain of the people that belonged to Yeshua. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. These were the days of unleavened bread. This is the time between Passover and the end of unleavened bread. In verse 4, And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter. That Easter was put in there 
By the King James people, the Greek word is pash, P-A-S-C-H, for Passover. It's intended at the Passover to bring forth to the people. In verse 5, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the congregation unto the Father for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept a prison. Then Yeshua came in and touched him and said, Rise up. Maybe you're in a situation you feel like you're in a prison. Well, I speak freedom to you right now. Satan, you loose those people that are surrendered to the Father. Loose those people. You can't keep them in prison. In the name of Yeshua, by the blood of Yeshua. And Yeshua actually said in the Gospel of John after he rose, up to this point you can do what you want, but there's going to come a day where they're going to take you, Peter, where you don't want to be. But remember, follow me. So in verse 8, Yeshua said unto him, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. Yeshua wants to lead you out of that prison right now. Just go follow him. Peter was set free during the Passover season. We too can be set free and fly with Yeshua in the rapture during the same season. As you can see, I'm showing you how there's an excellent possibility of us being set free, going into rapture from this earth, from this crooked world, to be with him forever. So we're going to pick up this message in the next podcast. It's an exciting message. Just look for his return. Watch the seasons. Study his feast days. It's proof from the word that the rapture could possibly happen during the, the season of Passover. Passover to the last day of leavened bread. Sunday, April 21st at 6 p.m. to Wednesday the 30th at 6 p.m. I want to remind some of you that this is a pro-life ministry. We believe that life begins at conception. The father is the agent of conception. Every podcast I pray for the babies in the womb. Remember with the babies in the womb, their hearts begin to beat around 16 days. And around five months, their hearts are pumping about 25 quarts of blood per day. This is a life, not a tissue. So I'm going to pray for the babies in the womb if you want to join with me. Father, I ask you to touch the babies in the womb right now. Father, bring them to a full birth. And we give you all the praise and the honor, Father, in the mighty name of Yeshua by the blood of Yeshua. And if any of you had an abortion out there, repent. Ask the Father to forgive you. And go on and follow him and don't look back. Also, I mention on every podcast, too, if your flesh, if Satan's giving you any thoughts that are not in the word, contrary to the Father's word, just say out loud, say, Yeshua, I thank you for the crown of thorns around your head. That was for me. That means my mind is protected by your blood. I only think your thoughts and give those thoughts to the Father. And don't look back. Be careful of distractions in these last days. Again, we're going to pick up this message on the next podcast. It's an exciting message. If you enjoy these podcasts, tell other people about these podcasts. If you want to email me, you can email me at contact, C-O-N-T-A-C-T, at henrywalker.org. Contact at henrywalker.org if you have a praise report or you have any questions. And don't forget to leave a comment if the Father prompts you to. So remember to next time. This is Evangelist Henry Walker saying, Greater is the Father in you, your daddy, the king of the universe, than anything or anybody in the world. Oh, yeah.